You know what's great about these videos is I don't have to worry if my breath stinks. Who cares? Hey, hey, party people, and welcome back to How to Draw Fashion Figures in Four Steps. If you have not watched video one, go ahead and do that because everything in this video is going to make 100% more sense if you do that. Today, we're gonna go over step two. When we last left off, we had these two complete step ones, one with a straight figure and one with a slightly hip cocked and twisted figure. Linty artist tape, visual reference, step one, piece of tracing paper. I'm gonna lay this on here. I'm gonna tape it down. Clear ruler. Skinny lead pencil. I'm going to draw my plumb line. Mark the bottom of her feet. And look, if it's curling up like this, it down some more so it's not bothering you while you're drawing. And we're going to fill out the body. We're not going to worry about anatomy. That's a that's the next couple of videos. We're going to flush the body out so that we can get accurate horizontal proportions so we can see better what the body is doing. the head, here's her neck, shoulders, and remember because this figure is standing exactly still, up, uh, exactly straight up and down, her center front is going to be the same as her plumb line. And because we have these circles that mark the width of her elbow, it's super easy at this point to figure out how wide to make her upper arm or her forearm. So connect the dots. Don't make me sing. We're gonna follow the rib cage and then go around the pelvic box. Elbow to wrist, and then we had our hand in here. And remember, the very bottom of the pelvic box is crotch level, which is aligned with her wrist. So we have a little panty line starting here. We have the width of her knees, so let's give her a little thigh gap. See how great this eraser is at getting super close to that line and erasing without erasing the whole thing. I love this eraser. Here's our ankle. So now we have a basic idea. figured out the apex before so you can mark her nipple and there's her little robotic body let's do this one once again take some linty tape take down an extra sheet of tracing paper trace your plumb line Okay. 
mark the bottom. And here we go. We have her head. the angle of her shoulders and then we have this width here when you're figuring out armpits unless your body is literally doing this sort of movement then your torso is going to be in front of the arm because your torso is thicker than your arm and so when you look at someone from the front the arm is always going to look like it's behind the torso your torso is always going to be closer to us I cannot think of any person I've ever seen in my life that has arms that are bigger and thicker than their torso. So I'm just going to say that's a fact. You guys are going to email me weird pictures of people now, aren't you? Okay. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's true. So here we go breasts, center front, nipples. Okay. We're going to use the bottom of this circle and the top of this circle to figure out the angle of her elbow like that. There's her torso. And look, this, the bottom of the pelvic box, once again, is the widest part of her hips. So by extending this line, you know where the hip is gonna extend out to, and then where it should start swinging back like that. Look at her here, at crotch level. She, that's where her hip is the widest. See, even if you were to trace her, that's where she starts swinging back. I think I made her too fat. So let's go out and then back in. Here's the center front. I'm gonna give her a little bit of a thigh gap, like you can see here. Use that knee. Here's her ankle, so here is my calf. I know at this angle, she kind of looks a little bit double jointed, like her knee is bending in a weird angle, but don't worry about that. Once we flesh out her leg muscles, it'll stop looking like that. And then on this side, we have her arm here and here. And then her hand is in the front. That's why we keep looking at this to make sure things are making sense. Because the way she's positioned, her hand could very easily have been behind her thigh, but it's not. Like so. I'm gonna make a teeny tiny confession. 
I'm not like 100% natural in front of the camera yet. And so my hand is shaking a tiny bit out of nerves. So if you think I don't draw as well as I should, it's, it's kind of being in front of the camera. I, I'm hoping that as I keep making these videos that I'll get better and I'll, I won't shake as much. Anyway, so here is a complete step two for this figure. Do not separate these out, okay? Don't abandon this. Just keep it together for now, all right? Because walking poses are so popular, I decided to include one in the series. I pulled this one and out of all the different kinds of walking poses, I like this one because it's got the classic hip cock to one side, one leg straight, one leg bent so that we can address foreshortening. I like the fact that one hand is behind her hip because who wants to draw more hands than they need to? And then I like the fact that one arm is swinging out because when I'm designing, I like the option of showing whether a sleeve has fullness. We're gonna mark her plumb line. So here we go. Where's her clavicle here? And there's her weight ankle and there's your plumb line. High hip is always gonna be your weight leg, all right? If you have any kind of pose where the girl is standing with her weight on one foot or the other, or walking so that one foot uh, has all the weight, the weight leg is always gonna be on the high hip. Okay? If you don't believe me, Stand up right now, and I want you to stand in a way where all your weight is on one leg. Now, if you'll notice that that leg has the high hip, you know, this is the lower hip, this one is the higher hip. Now, now you're standing like that, try standing so that your weight is all on one leg, but that is the lower hip. I want you to pause this video and try it. Is it working? Do you feel sexy? Probably not, okay? You probably look stupid. This is what I tell students in class all the time. You know, sometimes their croquis look a little bit weird or they pick these very strange poses or something in the croquis building process got awry. And I look at the pose and I look at them and I'm like, look at this pose. I want you to do this pose with your own body. And I do, I make them stand up and do the pose with their body. And uh, usually they will look really strange because the pose is so whack. And I'll say, now, do you feel sexy? Seriously though, if you are figuring things out and something looks weird, try to do it with your own body. Look, if you physically can't do it yourself, then you don't want your your crookie figure to be doing it the only exception to that rule would be if you were designing for Cirque du Soleil you know I mean those guys can do things I didn't like how do you do that with the bones and cartilage still in place like that's crazy I would like to add at this point that you know even if you were to do a plus size figure or someone who is not your classic super skinny fashion figure, I would start by using visual reference that features someone very thin like this. Because regardless of what our flesh looks like, our bones are pretty much the same. 
And so when you have a visual reference where you can see a lot of the bone markers on like someone this thin where you can see hip bones and clavicles and stuff, it will help you figure out the figure and the drawing and the pose and everything. And then later on, you're like, no, no, my girl, she's a size 14. She is your national average. She's got curves and you know, this is who I'm designing for. That's awesome. But you need to know where the bones are first. So I would start with a really skinny uh, visual reference and then add your flesh later. If you want to review on step one, go ahead and rewatch the first video, but I'm just going to zip through the first part of this. pelvic box so here's the angle of her hips here's the bottom of her pelvic box which is her crotch following that same angle these two lines have to be parallel okay these are bones this can't go this way and this go way go that way I, this doesn't work these two lines must be parallel here's her center front and so there is this rectangle and this rectangle must be the same size. Her, she's sticking her butt out a little bit. You're seeing a teeny tiny bit of her side. So we're gonna see a teeny tiny bit of her side here and a teeny tiny bit. She's not even as uh, twisted as this pose, but you are gonna see a little bit. There's your pelvic box. Her wrist is down here, right? Very close to her crotch. And then the angle of her arm is back here and her hand is back here. And just a reminder, I am gonna teach you guys how to do faces. I am gonna teach you guys how to do elongated figures, but I wanna do these basic four steps with you first, okay? So stay tuned for future videos. So here is step one for this figure. Let me peel this up. And I'm gonna fold this over and you're like, Zoe, that's backwards. And I'm like, I know. Here's a little trick for you. When I'm developing croaky figures, I sometimes like to do my corrections or I like to flip flop the poses to correct myself because if the pose is good and if everything is physically correct and good then it doesn't matter if she's going this way or this way it should look good it should look natural like she's walking a beautiful runway walk if you're looking at your figure and you're like what something is a little bit off here Go ahead and flip it over and nine times out of ten your mistake will show up like that and here's why it's like uh, you're so used to looking at it a certain way that your eyes have sort of glossed things over it's like how it's difficult to edit your own essays because you've just been staring at your own words for so long and then the second you hand it to someone else they're like oh you miss a comma here you miss a comma here and why do you not know how to spell things, right? You, they pick them up immediately because they haven't been staring at it forever. If you're working on a figure like this and you're just constantly looking at it and you're just thinking, ah, something is off, I don't know what it is, just flip it over. And it's like a whole new figure and you're like, oh, her hip is weird. Oh, that's not where her kneecap goes. Okay, you'll see it, you'll spot it. It's kind of like that whole fresh eyes effect. 
So here's the step two now. And you're like, wow, her neck is so thick. I mean, don't worry about it. I mean, you could slim her down a little bit, but that's not really a big concern for us right now. So here's the angle of her shoulders. Here's her torso. Here's her center front. What did I forget, guys? I'm always telling my students, hey, if you see me during demo making a mistake, you should just call me out on it. And I guess since this is a video, you can't do that. But if you caught me before, good for you. So, plumb line. Okay, so here's her center front. Here's her torso. And we're going around the hip. That's the bottom, that's her crotch, that's her little bikini line, and there's her knee, so we know exactly how wide to make this. And again, the crotch is the widest part, so we're going to swing her out like that. And her legs are, are slightly crossing, but she still does have a thigh gap, so we're going to give her one too. Call it sunshine leg. Here's her ankle, and so we're gonna put that in there and trace her foot. And then we're not really seeing that anymore. She's tucked away back there, but here are her knees, and here's her other knee. And we're gonna address that with anatomy later. Here's her arm. So you see, like if I had just marked this with little circles, then you would have no idea how wide to make anything. You would actually have to think about it. This way eliminates thinking. Here's her shoulder. Her wrist. And it's back here. Oh, forgot our boobs. Here's her nipple. It's good to mark nipples on your croquis so that you can design around your breasts accordingly. Like, if you're gonna show the nipple, it should be deliberate. It should be a deliberate design thing. All right. And now you have your completed steps one and two for your croquis figure. The next video, it's gonna be all about leg anatomy, which is gonna be the most important part of the body that we really uh, get good at articulating the muscles. And then the video after that, I'm going to go over the anatomy of the upper body. We're going to put it all together and then we're going to start drawing something that looks slightly human. <laughs> all right. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the like button, whatever. And then uh, I will see you next week. <laughs>